A few months ago, I had a conversation with a YouTuber called I'm Demon Wolf, and that was uploaded onto his channel in a long version and also a short version, and then the 2AM Vegan re-uploaded the short one. So thank you to them and to everyone who shared that content. However, I left out some important and interesting information which I'd like to tell you about. For example, can bivalves feel pain? So this is a follow-up. If you haven't yet watched the main video, please do so. But here is a 60 second recap. Oysters, scallops and other bivalves have collections of neurons called ganglia. For example, one ganglion operates their gut and human beings have one of those as well. But one of the bivalve ganglia is completely different from the others and that's the cerebral ganglion and cerebral means brain and that acts as their control centre and their centre of awareness. The strict dictionary definition of the word brain doesn't actually apply because the cerebral ganglion isn't contained within a skull, but it nevertheless operates as a brain. It's the brain ganglion. So it's about going beyond the dictionary aspect and not getting misled by narrow definitions or labels or semantics and simply looking at the actual practical physical function. The same thing applies with lobsters. Like bivalves, lobsters have cerebral ganglia instead of a quote-unquote brain, and yet they are now officially recognised, even by the British government, as being sentient. So that was the main theme of the first video, and I also expanded into the implications of that. For example, a severed finger has sensory and motor neurons, but bivalves, as well as having sensory and motor neurons, also have cerebral neurons, acting as a control centre, which a severed finger obviously doesn't have. Now following on from that, there's an important piece of research which I didn't discover until after the first video came out. And that research, which was looking at scallops, found that their decision to swim away and try to escape from danger can be traced back through the electrical signals to their cerebral ganglion. All these references are in the video description, by the way. That research has found that, quote, the high-level control of escape behaviour resides in the cerebral ganglion. Close quote. If you or I were trying to get away from danger, then our escape behaviour would also be controlled by cerebral neurons. But in our case, the collection of cerebral neurons gets labelled as a brain inside a skull, whereas with bivalves it's called a cerebral ganglion. But functionally, it all works out exactly the same. Now, when I said in the first video that the cerebral ganglion was the brain ganglion, one person said that I was trying to mislead people because they thought I was misusing the word brain. But when you look at the research into invertebrates, whether that's bivalves or snails or grasshoppers, you name it, the term cerebral ganglion is in fact used interchangeably with the word brain because they function as brains. In other words, gathering information from the other parts of the body, including sensory input, and acting as a central processing unit and making decisions, and all the rest of it. So, for example, here's a study from 2001. Quote, the central nervous system in Lumbriculus consists of a cerebral ganglion, bracket, or brain, close bracket, with brain in inverted commas. Here's a 2008 study on invertebrates. Quote, the olfactory information is processed in the brain, bracket, the cerebral ganglion, bracket. They're synonyms. The cerebral ganglion is the brain ganglion. Here's another one. Quote, the nervous system of the bee, they're talking about honeybees, includes a cerebral ganglion, bracket, brain, close bracket. Here's another one. Quote, the cerebral ganglion, bracket, brain, bracket, and it says that three times. And here's a pretty recent one which is specifically discussing bivalves. Quote, bivalves have a cerebral ganglion, bracket, brain, bracket, that gives rise to blah blah blah. Something which heavily overlaps with this, and this is really important, and I didn't have time to cover it properly in the first video, is the issue of central nervous systems. Scientists use the CNS label under two definitions. Under its narrow definition, central nervous system means the brain and spinal cord of vertebrates, including human beings. And under that definition, the issue of a central nervous system is simply irrelevant when you're discussing invertebrate sentience. 
For a human being, having a central nervous system, including a brain, is essential because that's what we're designed to have. And so if we were born without it, especially the brain, then we wouldn't be sentient because our consciousness is inside a brain, inside a skull. So if you took that away from us, then our consciousness would just be extinguished. But bivalves, and indeed lobsters, don't need a brain in a skull plus a spinal cord because the key components, in other words, a control centre and nerves linking everything up, are all still there. They're just configured differently. It's a bit like if someone said, you can't write with a pencil because there's no ink in it. Well, no, just because a pen needs ink doesn't mean that a pencil does. It's just a different system. So it's really important to avoid false analogies. And this used to be a massive problem when it came to biologists acknowledging, or in fact not acknowledging, fish sentience. Because human consciousness involves the neocortex, which is the top part of a mammalian brain, most scientists assumed that the lack of a neocortex in fish meant that they couldn't be conscious, which was of course completely untrue, and in fact birds don't have a neocortex either. And yet, as recently as 2016, some biologists were still publishing papers claiming that fish were non-sentient and that they were basically unconscious machines. And the same kind of error is happening when people use the brain plus spinal cord definition of the central nervous system in order to exclude invertebrates, including bivalves, from moral consideration. That narrow definition is simply irrelevant, it just doesn't apply because they have a different configuration of the same underlying fundamental elements. However, under its broader definition, which is the definition which gets used in invertebrate research, central nervous system means that the various parts of the nervous system are all connected to a control centre. And under that definition, bivalves do have a central nervous system. And that's why biologists refer to bivalve central nervous systems all the time. Which is absolutely amazing, because if you ever look at a YouTube comments thread under a video which mentions bivalves, there are always people very confidently saying, they're not sentient, they don't even have a central nervous system. Yet meanwhile, the people who are actually doing research on bivalves constantly refer to them as having central nervous systems. I've got a list here of quotes from research papers. First one, which has been determined only in the central nervous system of bivalves, unquote. Next one, the central nervous system, bracket, CNS, bracket, of oysters, blah, blah, blah. Next one, the central nervous system, bracket, CNS, bracket, of the scallop, and so on. So, under the narrow definition, the issue of them having a central nervous system or not is completely irrelevant. And then, under the broad definition, they do have a central nervous system. So there's no argument there against bivalve sentience either way. And yet, there's a 75,000 view YouTube video on a vegan channel telling everyone that bivalves are definitely non-sentient and it's definitely fine to kill them because they don't have a central nervous system. And that has had over 4,000 likes because I guess people like to be told that kind of thing. The amount of misinformation especially coming from vegan YouTubers, has been incredible. And that's why I'd be really grateful if you would please consider sharing this video, because this is an attempt to counteract all the false claims which are out there. Under the precautionary principle, even if there were only a very small chance of their being sentient, we should still err on the side of caution and leave bivalves alone. And some people have said, well, that would mean that we'd have to take the same cautious approach when it comes to plants. Well, not really. Plants have intelligence, and I would say awareness of some kind. But what about conscious awareness? We know for a fact that cerebral neurons sustain consciousness, because that's what sustains our own consciousness. But plants don't have neurons, let alone cerebral neurons, or any other components which have been shown to sustain conscious awareness. Whereas bivalves, thousands of cerebral neurons. And in fact, the only animals without neurons are sea sponges and trichoplaxes, which are nothing like bivalves, they're a completely different kind of animal.
Another point, very briefly, is that some people say that some bivalves might be non-sentient because those particular bivalves are sessile, meaning non-moving. Well, first of all, they're all motile in the earlier stages of their life. Motile means that they move around. And even the supposedly sessile ones, like mussels and oysters, are in fact motile to some extent, even in later life. So there isn't a clear division. And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, all bivalves have virtually identical neurology, including a cerebral ganglion. And so mapping the supposed sessile motile distinction onto the sentience issue just wouldn't make sense. And finally, do bivalves feel pain? Well, first of all, pain isn't necessarily a requirement for sentience or for a being to be deserving of moral consideration, as shown by the fact that one human being in every 25,000 suffers from congenital analgesia, which is the inability to feel pain. And we wouldn't call them non-sentient or say that they're some kind of zombie or they're not conscious. But some people are interested in the pain topic, so here it is. When they're talking about non-human animals, biologists generally resist using the word pain, because that might mean that they're getting a bit too close to the world of animal rights, perish the thought. So they generally use the word nociception, which means the physiological perception of noxious stimuli. And if you look through the research on bivalves, here's what you find. Quote, Evidence for nociception does exist in aquatic bivalves. End of quote. And that's taken from the Journal of Experimental Biology in 2015. And again, all the references are in the video description. We already know for certain that bivalves have cerebral neurons, and that cerebral neurons sustain consciousness, because that was what sustains our own consciousness. So even if someone is still not completely certain about the pain issue, despite the fact that pain isn't in fact needed anyway for sentience, and that evidence for nociception does exist, according to the Journal of Experimental Biology Research, then why not give these creatures the benefit of the doubt, instead of taking a chance on killing a sentient animal by scalding them to death using boiling steam or by eating them alive, which are the two main ways in which bivalves are killed. And the fact that a lot of biologists are dragging their feet about acknowledging bivalve sentience is no reason to abandon the precautionary principle, because these are the exact same biologists who said that lobsters weren't sentient until 2021 when they all started changing their minds. They're also the same anti-sentience type of biologist who are arguing, as late as the 1980s, that human infants can't feel pain. It's worth asking why so many vegan YouTubers are claiming with endless and groundless confidence that bivalves are non-sentient. I think the reason for this is that people associate animal rights with someone throwing paint and looking irrational, and so they want to distance themselves from that by saying, I'm not one of those irrational vegans, and so if you want to kill certain types of animal, then that's fine by me. Meanwhile, the actual anatomical evidence goes out the window. And so you end up with vegan YouTubers being far more anti-vegan on this issue than even biologists, who are themselves pretty useless at acknowledging sentience, as shown by their track records in relation to fish and lobsters and human infants. One vegan video about bivalves with six-figure views says it's fine to kill them, it doesn't cite any scientific papers, and its main source is an opinion piece written by a gender psychologist who falsely claimed that bivalves don't have any type of central processing unit, which is completely untrue. And anyone could have found that out in five minutes if they'd just taken a step back and questioned it and looked up some research. And yet the comments thread is full of people praising this vegan YouTuber for being so reasonable. Meanwhile, bivalves are being killed in their millions in horrendous ways, and supermarkets, including Tesco in the UK, are selling live bivalves in airtight, shrink-wrapped packages, within which these harmless and helpless little animals take between two and three days to suffocate to death. 
These are moral crimes, and for animal rights advocates to be validating this kind of thing is truly shameful. We should all be speaking up for these forgotten victims of the meat trade. So please share this video, and the part one video, with as many people as you can, and let's try to get the truth out there. And thank you for listening.